So if we've planned our project, the various screens that we're going to work with, and interfaces, and organization, and our approach, well then, a lot of it then is going to re rely on the coding. And last time we were here, we started a brand new jQuery mobile project, and we started to explore the new data role attributes and all of that, and we were able to create a very cool interface pretty quickly based on the knowledge we already have. Based on the example project, we still have more to do to set up that project. And as we get more experience in any web coding or app coding, as often as possible, most of the time, we want to find out shortcuts, time savers. We don't want to reinvent the wheel every time. And we started to write a little bit of code last time, and we could continue to build upon it. But let me show you a tool that if you were going to start all over with a brand new app, after the class is done and you're going to start a brand new app, let me show you a tool here that might help you get started. There are many uh, companies out there that are trying to pull out a product that will help you quickly create at least an interface for your app. It's not going to make the app for you because it's your idea and what you needed to do is more complex. But there are various companies out there, Ionic, Kodika, Sencha, that have a version of how to create an interface quickly. I'm going to show you one here that um, I like that will help us quickly create a jQuery mobile project. Let's go to this address here, delicious.com slash vmcampos. And the reason we're going through this in a roundabout way is because there's a paid version and a non-paid version of this software that I'm going to show you. The paid version is still not that expensive, but I want to show all of the free stuff as much as possible. And so, as I've been teaching this class for a few years now, I've been using this tool, and they had this free version, and eventually then they shifted gears and made it so that now it's paid. And I reached out to them and I said, hey, I teach a class. Is there like a student version? I'm just trying to teach the software. And they said, well, let us give you this sort of like developer's preview version for your students. This link here then is not directly accessible from their main website. I asked for it and they gave it to me and I have it saved here. Delicious.com is simply a link saving website. If I find a cool link, I save it here and I share it with people, whatever. But I've saved this link for this software called Kodika. That's the software we're going to use. Kodika software to create jQuery mobile projects quickly. And there's many other competitors, Ionic. Sencha, Intel, NDK. There's a lot of them out there to create an interface. Kodika is one of them. I like it. I've used it on, on many projects. That's what I'm going to use in this class. But the paid version is the one that you're going to see when you go to their site, kodika.com. I've never heard it pronounced. I don't know if it's pronounced Kodika or what. I want to say Kodika. If you go to kodika.com, they're going to sell you their latest version. I don't know what the price is at the moment. Let me show you the free version for educational purposes. Scroll down to the bottom and go to page 3. I've saved a lot of links. Go to page 3. Scroll down to the part that says Kodika Prototypes. That's what we want. So that's over, uh, over on... Uh, your date on it, but oh, right there, January 15th. So scroll down on page three of my links. You'll find Kodika prototypes. Click on that link right there. Maybe we want to save that somewhere. But um, yeah. I would rather that you get it from here because I don't want to. I asked for them for the purposes of the class, but I don't want to put it out there for everyone to see because the network folder, everyone sees it. So let's uh, 
go there, kodika.com embed editor. And here is a pretty cool drag and drop interface where I have the various widgets. For example, if I drag from the top page header into the interface here, it gives me a header, a few elements on the side, and then inspect code. I can see the code that was written for me, although it's not using the latest semantic HTML5, but I see the data roll header, I see the data roll page, ID, etc. Just, I'm going to drag and drop a few things just to show you here. I drag this in, I get some elements, I get nav bar, just kind of dropping some things here. We're going to do it for real in a moment. What I'm showing you here is these are the various things uh, that we were talking about. Here's a text input. I drag and drop that in, view my code, and it shows me, well, that's what you created. Label, input. So we could, of course, go back to our starting point that we were on Tuesday and continue to add to it and write all the code. Perfectly fine. Or we can use this starting point. This is not going to create the app for us, of course, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's going to have us start to create our project. And so what I would like to use Kodika for is to just basically borrow all of the pieces of our project and then take it back into Notepad and then refine it to what we need. The paid version of this will let you start a project and edit it online and let you do everything online in its own editor and so forth. And it might be worth it to you. I don't know the price at the moment, but I think it's like $20 a month. And if you would rather have the free version, this is the free version. It is limited in that you, if you reset, if you refresh your screen, you lose everything. So you're not able to save this. The great thing is, though, you are able to download the full HTML. As I start to build my project here, I can look at inspect code, but that's not the complete code, is it? It's missing the head and the body and all of that basic stuff. And yes, I could select and copy and paste. But no need, because after we build our basic interface here, we're then going to download it and take it back into Notepad and continue to work. So this is not just a little FYI for you. I recommend everyone follow this link right now, and we're going to create our basic interface for our project. We don't have the ability to do page 1, page 2, page 3. Don't worry about it. Here's how I'm going to use this. I'm just going to drag and drop the basic elements header. You don't even have to change anything here, like you know, home page or anything. I'm just going to drag and drop. I'm going to bring down the footer. Be careful that you drag it down and don't accidentally put a footer in a header. You want to drag it down. I'm going to drag the nav bar on this nav bar again. If you drag it too far out like this, you're going to put it in the content area. You want it still in the header. And there's button on the right side. I will add a new button, new button, right? Because we need a home, art, computers. So drag nav bar and then add more buttons on the side. You have various properties, various properties of these elements. I'm not going to spend a lot of time tweaking these properties here. Again, if I refresh or back out or come back, I'll lose it all. I don't want to spend too much time working here. I just want to put together a quick interface and then download it to use in Notepad. Maybe I'll just put you know some icons just to have something. There is the part about um, initially active, yes. Remember, we had to write that little bit of code. Class equals something. I think it was UI button active and UI state persist. Well, here with a, with a selection, it'll do it. And then I can, of course, inspect the code to remind me, oh, yes, it was UI button active and UI state persist. I'll put in a header uh, text. I don't really need button, I don't need link, image. This image actually is not really worth it. 
it, for some reason, it, it's too much code for a simple image, so I don't recommend the image widget. This map is okay. It's gonna, it lets you create a very basic map with a location and such, but it's not going to be the dynamic map that we're going to use later. So you can use the map if you want or not. I'm not going to use it. If you no longer want an, an element, you can just click the little red remove. We will use this collapsible element. These are like drawers that will open up to store information. And the way this is set up is there's one drawer so far with a section header, it collapsed. No, I, I want to say yes, collapse it, close the drawer, and add a new section, collapse it as well. You know, three or four sections of content. I don't have a page one, page two, page three. I'm just going to drop all of my widgets that I want to use in here because I want that code. I could write the code myself, of course. But I'm going to borrow all of these widgets and the code and then use it for my purposes. Eventually, I'm also going to use a list view element. I'm going to drag that in and, and be careful that you don't put a list view inside of a collapsible. You can fix it, of course, but make sure the elements are separate. This one is made up of dividers and buttons, and on the right side here you can say add new buttons, add new dividers. If I added a new button, I get another button. I can add a divider, there's another divider. Again, don't worry about labeling these things yet, we'll do it in Notepad. This element here, which we will understand, we're going to understand what we've created in a moment. So we put in a, I can put in like a little bubble counter here, some other options like inline and such. There's a widget called Grid, which will let us divide up our screen into rows and columns. I drag that in here. It's simply how many rows, how many columns. I don't know how many I'll need, but I'll put two by two. I'll be able to examine the code. We'll, we will examine this code in a, little, in a little while. There's the form elements. This one, I'm not going to take any of these form elements at the moment because eventually our app will have the functionality when it's an actual app to have some cool features such as tap into your user's Gmail and to tap into social media and such. So these elements of, of the form, I'm not going to use them. I just wanted these other widgets That's good enough here, and then on the top right I'll click download. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to kind of put something together here, explore it a little bit. Make sure you download that on the top right corner. I'll be there one moment. Uh, I'm going to save that. Make sure you save a copy of that somewhere. And we're going to use this project in a little bit. So let me give everyone a couple of moments to explore that. If you put it in, I'm, I, it's there. If you put it in, don't worry that you can't see it. But just the, 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 So if it doesn't let you scroll down, it looks like there might be a bug 
I'm in uh, Firefox and it didn't let me scroll down. I don't know if in Chrome it will, but again, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not trying to really design my interface just yet. I just want those pieces of code. So if you didn't put them in the order that I did, that's okay. Just put the elements in there and then download them. And then we're going to open it in Notepad in just a moment. Once I'm in trouble, call me over. Make sure you get all those pieces. If you came in a little late, remember to sign in, please. Okay, so again, don't worry too much about designing the interface here. We just want the widgets. Then when you've got it together, we'll click download on the top right, and then I'm going to close the whole thing. Um, remember, to get back to it, you want to go to delicious.com slash vmcampos, my account, and then on page 3, you will see the Kodika prototypes. I'm, I'm done with it. I'll close it. Well, actually, one more thing. If you were curious, I'm going to take a quick look at this as you wrap it up. If I do go directly to Kodika.com, they're saying here that Kodika is now Ionic Creator. Signups are disabled. Read more about the transition. So they had their, uh, they had, they changed their business model to be a uh, paid service now. And, you know, it's just another one of these many companies out there that are offering this, that you can create mobile interfaces quickly. Kodika is one of them, and there's a bunch of other ones. So I downloaded my project. It saved it to the desktop. It called it Kodika App 147, etc., a zip file. It gave me all my code completely compressed here. So. Once you download your file, find it on your desktop, and you'll have to right-click it and select Extract. We cannot work with this until we extract it, so this often happens when we do this that people double-click it and want to work with it. No, you have to first right-click the zip file. It's got a little zipper, it's compressed. You want to right-click it, Extract All. Let it extract wherever it's saying, and you will get then a folder, and inside of the folder there's a mobile website folder, and inside of that are the code files we're going to work with in a moment. So of course I'll be saving a copy of my code at the end of the day, uh, and I've downloaded this starting code. I'm going to put it in my flash drive so I don't lose it. And we will we'll start coding.
I'm going to rename my file after I've extracted it. I'm going to rename it to the project name with today's date. And usually that's what I'll do. I'll upload a, a complete folder of my work at the end of the day with today's date. I've extracted it, and inside is the mobile website folder. If you extracted just the mobile website folder, you'll be okay. But I, I have it separated this way. It's the main my SDCE project and then the mobile website. Because remember, the, the concept of our um, drawing we have the idea that the user will visit some page that will detect their uh, device and then send them to the mobile version or the desktop version. So all I'm saying is eventually we will have the mobile website version and then the desktop version. Desktop website. You don't have to do this at the moment, but I'm just letting you know. Our main project and then mobile version, desktop version, and this mobile version is what Kodika gave me. Let's pause here. By now you should have downloaded and extracted your code. Does everyone have the Kodika code downloaded and extracted? Anyone need a little help? All right, so let's look at what we've got. Uh, here's a little trick. If you select all three of those files and right-click, you will be able to open all three of them at once in Notepad. Let's open all three of those files that it gave us to see what did it give us. We have an index.html file, kodika external.js file, kodika.external.css file. In Notepad, the kodika external.js file is very anticlimactic. It just says put your JS code here. Okay, will do. The kodika external CSS, put your external CSS code here. Okay, we'll do that eventually. And then the index file is where all the good stuff is at. Depending on what you did on your particular project, I've got 118 lines of code. You may have more or less, doesn't matter. But I've brought down all of the code that Kodika gave me. We need to refine a few things, and then we'll get started with our project. So everyone should be in the index.html file back in Notepad now. does not really matter, but you'll get into a fight with a lot of people about what's the right way, doc type capital or doc type lowercase. We're going to do doc type lowercase. We'll fix that first there on line one.
here in uh, the index file. I'm going to first change doc type to lowercase. It would work perfectly fine with uppercases. And uh, everyone's going to get have an opinion what's the right one. But I believe from all of the specs that I've seen, lowercase. Meta car set, great. Meta viewport, great. Notice they wrote it slightly differently than us. They have 1.0 instead of just 1. Although they're missing something here. We've got initial scale and user scalable. What are we missing? On line uh, 5, we'll add comma with equals device with. It would work probably pretty fine without it, but based on what we've already learned, we should include that. Uh, don't forget the comma here. So inside of the attribute content, we'll add the value of with device with. Line 6 and 7 eventually will be optional. But for the moment, they are there to help your web project look best on Apple devices. Maybe we're never going to be targeting an Apple device eventually. But for the moment, because it's still technically a web project, I'll leave it there for the moment, and then later on we might take it out. Line 8 has a title which is empty, but the thing that happens is that if you look at it on, on the web browser, title automatically gets filled in based on the first heading. So uh, number, so title is empty, but you don't really have to put anything there because our H1 down here fills it in. So that's fine. I've got a couple of empty spaces for some reason. I'll just maybe clean those up. We've got a link, rel style sheet. And that's a style sheet pointing over to the jQuery mobile code. We're going to fix that in a moment, and we're actually going to upgrade it, because that's jQuery 131. We were using 145. We'll fix that in a moment, but keep in mind that we want to use the latest version, and we might as well download a local version, because I don't want to be beholden to cloudfront.net being available 24-7. I want a copy of the code for myself to be safe. We'll do that in a little bit. Then we've got another link to another style sheet. There's our external CSS file where we're going to write our custom CSS code. Notice the order. The jQuery mobile CSS file first and then our custom code later to override anything that we may want to override. If we're tired of the built-in basic background color that jQuery CSS gives, jQuery mobile CSS gives us, our version will override it because it also comes later in the code. Then we've got references over to jQuery and jQuery mobile. We're pointing over to jQuery 191. We have a newer version. I think it's, I think it's 1.12 or something. We'll download that version eventually in a moment and we'll set it. And then it's also pointing to 131 jQuery mobile. We want 145. We'll get that in a moment. Then we've got the codica.external.js file, but it's pointing over to their server, to their own custom code. We're going to use our own custom code in the folder in just a moment. Um, well, we should do it right now, actually. That'll be easy. So just go ahead and change that line 20 to simply be script source equals codica.external.js. Just like line 13 points to the local Kodika CSS file, now we're pointing to our local Kodika JS file. So we have three JavaScript external files. Uh, any problem here, perhaps? I think I heard someone say that the JavaScript code is in the wrong place. They have it up on the head, which will probably work, but we want it down in the body. So I'm going to select lines 15 to 20 and cut those so that I can move them all the way down to approximately line 107. 
before your body ends. You can bring in the comment as well. Just take all of that JavaScript, all of those JavaScript references, move them before the end of body. If I had no internet connection, my project would look terrible. It would default back to no special styling and such. I don't want to be beholden to that. I want to download those supporting files to have local copies. Let's take a moment to download local copies of jQuery Mobile and jQuery. So open up your web browser. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. Go to jQueryMobile.com, and when this loads up on the right side, you will see a button that says Download jQuery Mobile, the latest one. I'm going to download that. It'll give us a zip file. I'll show you what to do with the zip file because the zip file includes lots of ancillary files. You only need specific ones that I'll mention in a moment. So jQueryMobile.com. Again, this is why you don't want to point to a CDN sometimes because if they go down, you go down. Are you getting jQuery Mobile to load up? We're all connecting at once, so it's a little slow, but hopefully that'll load up. If it doesn't, maybe I can just pass you the files that we need. So eventually, hopefully, it loads up. Um, on the right side, then, um, we have latest stable. Um, so click on latest stable, and it'll just simply download a zip file. It's not that big, but take, take a moment to download that zip file, 7.5 megs. So save, save that. jQuery mobile zip file that it gives us of 145 has more things than we need. It gives us various versions of jQuery mobile. We specifically need the ones I'm going to show you here. So you don't need to extract the whole thing. We can save a little time this way. Once you download the zip file, double click the zip file. And we need to extract at the very bottom of the list. There's jQueryMobile.min, JS, CSS, and jQueryMobile.min.js. Those are the two we want. This one that are not minified, you can get them, but notice how larger they are. The minified version is 67K, the unminified is 153. Not a huge amount of difference, but this, these are more optimized. And all these other ones about the plain theme are even smaller and more compact, but they're limited. So the ones we need are the, the two at the bottom, but not map. We don't really need that one. So all you need to do is select these second to the last two ones and just drag them into your project folder. That will extract just what we need jQuery Mobile 145, jQuery Mobile 145, CSSJS.
What we also need are the icons, those, you know, those 50 icons that we have access to. You know, the alert icon, map icon, all of that. So drag that whole images folder into your project folder. Take a moment. The only three things that we need min.js, min.css, and images folder. This one other about structure, no inline ping, no icons, no, just those last two ones. The, not the last, last one, the last two ones. We will then edit our code in just a moment to point to those two files. We need the jQuery mobile supporting files locally. Now we're not going to have a problem if the person doesn't have a web inter a web connection. A moment ago, if the person had no internet connection, our app would, would not work. Now we will set it up to work offline. Before that, we need the jQuery code. If you go back to the web browser, it's a little subtle here, but it says, okay, the latest version of jQuery mobile 1.45 works with jQuery 1.8 to 1.11 or 2.1. At the moment, jQuery 3.1 is the latest version. That says that this works with versions 1.8 to 1.11 or 2.1. So we need to download one of those versions, and it'd be nice if this was a link to download. So we have to go up here to the jQuery home screen, home page, jQuery.com. There's a big old download button, but whoops, it's going to download 3.11. We don't want that version. We want... Yes, go ahead and click on that. That'll take you to the download screen. We want an earlier version. The reason is that uh, jQuery Mobile at the moment is still in development for 1.5.0, and therefore they have not updated 1.4.5 to be compatible with the latest versions of jQuery. So we want a slightly older version of jQuery. On the download screen here, go all the way to the bottom. You can see all past releases can be found on the server. So when you go to the jQuery homepage here, click on Download jQuery, and then go all the way down to the bottom, Past Releases, jQuery CDN. Okay, so then here it's saying there's a 3x branch that's too new for us. Here's a 2x branch, but it would give us 2.2.4, and we just saw we need 2.1. Here's the 1x branch, and this is 1.12, but it said 1.11, uh, so we need one version back. Okay, this is showing the latest one. We'll go back one more screen to see the older version. So when you're in the section here of jQuery core, Click on See All Versions of jQuery Core. We'll only need to do this once, of course, when we set up our project. Um, so let's find here. Question. I click on the top left little menu icon, mm -hmm. and then I click on Download, but I'm not seeing where you got the jQuery Core. When you're in this download screen right here, go all the way to the very, very bottom, and then click on jQuery CDN. Oh, gotcha. And then you'll be in the jQuery core section. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we need then is 1.11, and I see 1.11, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Mm. I guess we'll see what happens with 3. So. Find 1.11.3, minified version. Uh, you'll probably have to right-click it, or else it'll just uh, pop up with all the code or something. Right-click, yeah. right-click, save link. 
minified. We want the minified version, yes. Save link as. What's that? Save link as. Save link as. The browser might call it save file as or whatever, but yes, save link as. I'm in Firefox. So I'm going to do save link as. And I will save this file in my project folder. Alright, so just to confirm here, and I'll pause for a little help if you need it, we need jQuery Mobile 145, CSS and JS, and the images folder, and we just downloaded jQuery 1.11.3 min JS. This is all in my project folder. We will read right now before we edit our code. Again, I'll put my code in there at the end of the day, but we might as well help you if you need it now. Did everyone get these files into their project? We then just need to edit the code to point to these local files instead of the CDN versions, instead of the online versions. We can close jQuery site for the moment, I guess. And we'll go back to Notepad. Maybe start at the top here. Line 10 or so is my link to my style sheet which I need to simplify all the way down for it just to say jQuery mobile, jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS. That's just the name of the file in the folder right there. Changing that line, linking to that style sheet to jQuery mobile dash one four five min CSS. And then at the very end of my code, um, our first line is jQuery, and it has to be in this order. We need jQuery first. That's a basic foundation of JavaScript than any other JavaScript libraries, jQuery Mobile. So line 108 or so is where I'm pointing to jQuery. jQuery dash 1.11.3.min.js. Lastly, jQuery Mobile. One, four, five. Save it and run it, and your project should run. You should see something. It should not be all just black and white. That meant you mistyped something because you can't find the supporting files. Over on, uh, if you had previewed it a moment ago, version 1.3 of jQuery Mobile had a, had a default black theme. And 145 has a default gray theme. Let me confirm with mine. Perhaps I should see this. Yep. So we'll stop here, take our first break. Make sure everyone's at this point. Your project should look like this. If you don't have every single widget that I have, that's okay. Again, um, we can get back to Kodika and such, but this is what it is so far. So it's uh, one. It's seven seventeen. We'll take a break until seven twenty-seven, and then we'll go on.